Welcome back, everyone. Our next session will be an interview exploring the evolving telco and enabling the digital economy. Camille Halali, Group Chief Strategy Officer at Zane Kuwait, will be interviewed by Lucky Larika, Head of Digital Services at Ericsson Middle East in Africa. I'd like to remind our audience that they can send their questions using the chat feature, and if there is time, Lucky will do his best to address them. Can I now invite our speakers to turn on their webcams and microphones and join us for the session? Lucky, over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome. Lucky Richard, Head of Digital Services for Ericsson Middle East and Africa. So honoured to have with me here today, Camille Hilali, Chief Strategy Officer of Zane Group in Kuwait. Welcome, Camille. Thank you. Thank you, Loki. Thank you. Great to have you with us. And it's, um, it's a, a wonderful topic that's so relevant today, the evolving telco and enabling the digital economy. We need to uh, thank you for sharing your insight into this topic. The industry landscape necessitates a telco evolution, of course, not only to service our existing end consumer markets, but to also allow us to create new revenue streams beyond mobile broadband consumer and to wider segments and enterprises. Why we are so enthused to have you, Camille, together with us today is that Zane Group are one of those leading the evolution and have a very clearly mapped out journey with your foresight strategy and how you create a sustainable digital future. When it comes to the evolving telco, the fundamentals are clear. Transform the technology stack, build beyond mobile broadband to serve enterprises, fixed mobile convergence and portfolio transformation. I wanted to ask you a few questions about that, Camille. And I'll start with uh, you know, the first one that's on the top of my mind. Can you describe these key foundation blocks and your tactics in driving digital transformation across the Zane Group? Sure. Uh, th thank you. Thank you, Luki, for, for the question. Look, um, Zane has always been at the forefront of shaping the evolution in the region to bring uh, meaningful services to our customers, but also have a positive impact to, on, in our communities. Um, so from this commitment, you know, foresight, the Zane New Strategy was born. It's uh, to anticipate basically the digital transformation changes that are happening in our society and transform also ourselves accordingly. So uh, this strategy is about reinventing ourselves to allow us to fulfill the transformation vision and to send beyond existing mobile business to become a leading integrated digital service provider, which is what, what our actually countries require from now on from us. So foresight to the strategy is centered around four, two elements. First, I mean, evolving our existing telco core, and then incubating uh, new selected uh, digital service uh, verticals. On the, on, the, on the evolution of the telco core, we have identified four, four new areas uh, of impact in which foresight will develop value to, uh, to societies. The first one is uh, digital transformation. So this is mainly around for uh, fully digitalizing the customer journey, right? This has started a few years ago across all operations. We can see now that from uh, more and more transactions taking place uh, through apps, chatbots, and e-stores. And this is from customer interface perspective. Uh, but also as part of this stream now, we are focusing on our data governance. How can we make sure that we have real-time and accurate data to better serve our customer, but also predict uh, in real time or predict and anticipate also their needs. So, um, and this is a massive journey that we are in, undertaking now across our operation. It involves around enhancing our processes, train our people, but also having the right platforms in place. The second uh, areas of impact uh, as part of the foresight strategy is enterprise and government. So right before the start of pandemic, actually when we've announced the new strategy, we, we have mm. started we continue to invest in assets and innovation to anticipate the evolving needs of B2B customers. Uh, so, so basically across the industries, we're focusing now on productizing and working hand in hand with client to design and implement tailored need solutions. Uh, there is a strong demand from large businesses and from government as well for digital transformation, for ICT solutions, uh, such as cloud and, and, and hosting ser services. This demand is also strong within the SME segment which is something we're focusing on heavily in, in the countries where we operate. And this segment actually is key to bring digitalization into our societies. 
The third area is fixed and conversions. Of course, I mean, here knowing that, you know, mobile, the background is mobile, right? So fixed and conversions now is very important area. Uh, as you know, consumers and business are now growing in demand for seamless digital services. So respective whether it's mobile or fixed, uh, but rather actually, you know, they want a blend of both. So, so we believe that superior conversions of broadband connectivity will enable and accelerate, and accelerate the evolution of the information, education, and digital transformation across societies. So uh, Zane has been actually accelerating its effort to secure access to fixed infrastructure, whether through rolling out the network in our operations or actually forging winning partnership with key assets holders. Uh, finally, uh, we have the optimization and portfolio management. Uh, uh, we've seen vo uh, you know bigger volumes now. We've seen basically digital consumption per capita skyrocketing. So we need to mm -hmm. better supply. We need, we need a better supply model to match this demand with while remaining actually profitable. So um, we are continuously seeking opportunities to realize synergies and unlock value for our stakeholders. Uh, for instance, recently Zen Group has announced restructuring and new strategy around wholesale. So Zen Global Services that we announced recently, we now consolidate and manage capacity, voice messaging, and roaming businesses across all operations and become uh, the single interface for Zen, of course, but also for international carriers uh, with their requirements within our footprints. So yeah, this is basically the four. It's not basically, it's a, a very ambitious strategy and uh, it's great to see how it's playing out today. I want to hone in a little bit more when you talked about the Zane Opcos and when we relate it back to the digitization of industries and markets, this requires as much local market knowledge as it does industry knowledge. How, how are you addressing this across all of your markets, across each of the Opcos? Okay, so so again, here as part of the foresight strategy, we have gone through a process to identify and select four new growth cores outside the telco core. Um, mm -hmm. Cores are essential to bring the future growth, of course, but also are key to our transformation towards becoming an integrated digital service provider. So these cores are also instrumental to the regional development of the digital scene. The first one is the ICT and digital services. So at Zane, we believe that we have a role to play in helping businesses and governments achieve their strategic, operational, and financial objectives. Therefore, we are working on setting up a regional ICT powerhouse, bringing all ICT assets, capabilities under one roof under the name of Zane Tech. So this entity includes as a start Zane Data Park, which is a regional managed and professional service company that we set up a year ago to focus on cloud and cybersecurity. So Zane Tech will also house our digital arm and product house NXN. NXN is a central hub uh, providing uh, Zane operations and also beyond, you know, Zane um, with digital products and also services related to big data and analytics. And Exxon is also a leading partner of choice for some of the governments here in the region uh, when it comes to large scale digital transformation and smart city projects. Um, second, you know, aspect or, you know, the new cores that we're focusing on as well is digital infrastructure. So this new core will, we will approach it slightly differently and, and we're gonna mainly focus on partnerships. So Zane's mm -hmm. vision is to play an active role in the development of national and regional digital infrastructure and maximize value from our existing infrastructure. We have, for instance, recently strategic partnership with Task Towers, which is an independent tower operating company with focus on developing, developing countries, where we aim to help create regional and independent tower co-leader. That will serve, of course, Zane uh, as a customer, but also you know, the, the, the rest of the telco sector within the region. We are also in the process of initiating similar partnerships around uh, different asset class, such as the data centers, always you know, as part of the wholesale actually uh, effort. Uh, third basically core um, that we're focusing on is, is FinTech. So this is another core that we are incubating and whereby we introduced a suite of digital financial and insurance services that of course will contribute to uh, the evolution of the digital financial ecosystem and financial inclusion in our communities. So we have introduced FinTech in almost every market where we operate. Um, in KSA, for instance, Tamam, uh, which is our FinTech subsidiary there in, in, in the kingdom, have obtained the very first micro lending license in the kingdom. In Jordan, uh, in addition to the wallet, uh, we have obtained actually in, you know, recently in principle approval from the central bank to provide micro lending through, uh, through our subsidiary there, Zane Cash. 
the fourth basically uh, core is, is digital services, but mainly focusing on digital healthcare, media, and esports. So again, as part of our transformation strategy to become integrated digital service provider, we have identified basically the score to focus on healthcare, media, and esports. So we've seen basically, I mean, uh, for the past few months, the new study score has confirmed that the soundness of those choices as we continue to connect people, ensure business continuity, but also provide tools to help fight and manage the pandemic. So uh, in the digital healthcare, for instance, the ambition is to lead the development of the digital healthcare landscape in the region and facilitate the access to medical services. So as an example, in Kuwait, we have collaborated with the Ministry of Health to build uh, WASFA, which is an end-to-end -end in prescription digital platform connecting medical uh, stores, pharmacies, and doctors. Uh, again, in Kuwait, we have developed in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and the um, Central Agency of Information and Technology, Shlonek, which is the COVID-19 platform to manage and track the situation in the country. So again, in this uh, call, we're doing some baby steps, steps and, and we, we hope basically to take that experience across the region. And Camille, when you talk about uh, e-health, you talk about media, uh, e-sports e as an example, this is all uh, throughput and, and latency type of uh, use cases and user journeys. And we're all conscious of the opportunities that 5G will bring the service provider in innovating with enterprises as an example. If I hone in on enterprise opportunity, because you talked about that earlier, how are you preparing to digitize specifically for the enterprise opportunity? Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, the role of 5G uh, in the service provider portfolio is a complex, right? Um, technology is still new, uh, but the application span is, is enormous. Uh, so mm -hmm. at Zing, we invested significantly in 5G in our core markets. Uh, to be, of course, ahead of the curve. Um, my view basically potentially is significant in both consumers and enterprise. So I agree that the enterprise segment is still largely unexplored. And, and from the, that segment, we expect larger flexibilities. Having said mm -hmm. that, I truly believe in the convergence of ICT and telecom space. Uh, and it's really happening. And the opportunity exists when 5G and ICT uh, are put together. And, and that's why we have created you know, the subsidiary Zing Tech to focus on this area. Another component that is also becoming important in light of 5G is low latency applications and all the enterprise use cases in different verticals. And, and for that, in addition to the ICT expertise that we're incubating through Zaintech, wholesale and data centers, data center score actually, will play a major role in terms of bringing and guaranteeing the low latencies uh, by bringing basically content closer to the customers. So in essence, we need to make an effort to understand, of course, the digital transformation challenges of our clients and be ready to offer the solutions and, and have, uh, and this is something that we've done in the past and, and we're gonna make sure that we do it you know, going forward through all those initiatives and new courses that we are incubating. It's a really impressive uh, approach and, and, and really opening up to you know, different technologies that will aid us in the evolving telco. And talking a little bit more about the enabling the digital economy um, and really bringing innovation to the market, there's been a lot said across the industry on how the role of data, automation, artificial intelligence, machine learning, as an example, they can be leveraged as an edge against the competition. How real is this opportunity and how big is the potential impact coming up? So, look, as I said before, we have identified some of the key verticals where we, have, we are focusing today, um, you know, putting the right investments and the efforts. And we believe that we are ready to contribute in, in these areas, uh, you know, such you know, as ICT, FinTech, and, and digital services, such as healthcare, media, and esports. On, on those verticals, you know, data analytics, automation, AI, and, and ML are, of course, a core part of the value proposition, um, as there is no solution which can renounce to the enormous benefits deriving from adoption of these technologies. So it, it's not a matter of competition, but it's a matter of fulfilling the requirements of our clients. These technologies are embedded in the portfolios through capabilities, talents, and through strategic partnerships. Um, of course, I mean, look, telecom players, uh, uh, now they have to play you know, an important role. We are requested to contribute to our society's digital transformation plans and needs. And all those technologies are now standard part of such requests. But the supply part, of course, is still uh, far from being established and, and, and mm -hmm. as they understand this and we are taking 
as a mission basically to expand the capabilities, the quality of service to deliver hopefully on this mission. You mentioned just then around contributing to society. Um, one of those areas at Ericsson that we've experienced enormous growth over the past two years, especially during the pandemic, is fintech and mobile financial services. What we saw as an example across Africa, um, we saw it's all about financial inclusion, banking the unbanked as an example. What's the market opportunity in the Middle East and how are you gearing up to lead when it comes to mobile financial services? Look, uh, I mean, we don't need to look frankly into Africa to understand how important the opportunity is in, in the region. Uh, you know, some of the GCC countries here, if you don't have, if you have less than 10,000 yearly income, you can open a bank account. So it's, it's, it's easy to understand how many millions of people, you know, require a completely different approach to this. And, you know, inclusion is going to be very important. So here, of course, you know, both the technology, but also the regulatory uh, environment are coming into play. Um, very efficient platforms and banking solution are paving the way to create completely new set of services. So I mentioned earlier, basically, Tamam, Zane Cash. You know, at Zane, I think, you know, we're active in almost each of those countries where we operate uh, in the fintech, uh, try to bring basically this innovation. And uh, hopefully, you know, there will be some announcement and. Uh, and, and we're going to be playing, you know, a key role in, in this inclusion efforts. It's uh, it's an amazing area to be able to contribute and help society. So uh, we uh, we're totally supportive of that journey in the industry. I, I need to uh, then ask you, as as we start to conclude uh, our discussion um, today, which I've really enjoyed, um, and we'll see if we can uh, address some questions that are coming in from the audience. I want to understand a little bit more about your critical success factors for the Zane Group. What, what is your key challenge that's really keeping you awake at night? I, I think, uh, to be frank with you, I think this is a challenge that everyone is facing, every you know, uh, ambitious organization. And I think it's, it's the human factor, right? I mean, we need to, to make sure that you know, we have the right people, the, new, the, the right talent, uh, the, the, the right capabilities in place. Uh, so I think this is one of the main challenges that we have. Um, of course, I think, you know, we're lucky as in that we are regional companies, so we can actually, you know, tape into, you know, a new pool of talent, you know, be it, you know, in different countries where we operate and, and try to leverage that. Uh, yeah, so I think this is, this is the, main, the main challenge. Yeah, it's, a, it's a challenge right across the industry. Agree there, Camille. Now, if it's okay and time permits, um, we might take a few questions from the audience, Camille. And I'm going to do my best here uh, around these questions, okay? Um, how do Zane, the first question, how do Zane see catering of the specific needs to serve the B2B2X segments, which is one of the key focuses due to 5G or IoT requirements? And this is specifically a question asked based on the BSS capabilities and how they differ to meet the business to consumer segment. Do you think Zane might plan to build a separate BSS stack dedicated to B2B2X or enhance the capabilities of existing BSS applications? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a very interesting subject. I mean, earlier when we touched about basically digital transformation, we talked about basically the interface, right? So everyone is thinking about basically just, you know, the interface, uh, you know, making it basically easy for customers to buy their, their package online through the stores, et cetera. But the challenge, and I think the journey that we're undertaking is, is on, the, on the background, right? On, on, on the stacks, on, on the legacy systems. And, and the BSS actually is one of the main, main challenges we're facing. So, so I can tell you, frankly, I mean, no secret. I mean, uh, a few months back, we embarked like, actually you know, on, on Zane on that challenge. So we're looking actually to replace a lot of the BSS stacks that we have, uh, you know, uh, to something that would allow us basically, you know, easy integration. You know, a lot of the stuff we're doing today, <laughs> a lot of the manual stuff that is being needed today needs to be replaced. We can't afford now as, as a service provider and, 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 you know, an entity that prays, you know, digital transformation to do things manually. And, and we have new businesses. So it's not just the B2C. We have, you know, the wholesale, the B2B, the IoT, and all those need to be integrated. And the BSS, BSS is, is a key component. Uh, so, so it's very interesting because we're going through that, that transformation. And, 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 and interesting enough, you know, we're going beyond, you know, 
what we've been doing as, as a telco. We're looking at new type of vendors. We're looking at, you know, new solutions, you know, open stack type of solutions. And, and, and yeah, I, th I think, you know, frankly, we, we are at the right path. And I think, you know, you know there, there's a lot of, you know, uh, interesting things happening in Zane that, you know, will help us through this, uh, this journey. Great insight into the BSS evolution, Camille. I'm going to ask the next question. How do Zane see the telco's use of the public cloud, especially with 5G? Yeah, look, I mean, we, so from, from the cloud perspective, I mean, look, we started initially with the, so we set up a year ago, a company called Zane Data Park. So this is a company that, you know, provide, you know, hosting and, and, uh, and, and cybersecurity actually services. It started in Jordan um, and Kuwait. Uh, it's, it's basically live in those two countries. The plan now is to expand, you know, across our countries. So, so but it's mainly managed services exercise. So we have mm -hmm. you know, data centers that are, you know, in the premises of the telco business. And these guys basically, they have the expertise, they have their own SOC. And they provide actually you know, the 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 private and public cloud. Uh, now I think we're going toward another evolution whereby basically there is there is there is convergence between that service, but also the asset part, where we're looking to the edge data centers and, and hyperscaler basically type of data centers. You know, with 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 you know uh, trying to position the GCC as a hub for international connectivity, and with that of course you know the the you know the the solution that we know of you know with the, with big OTTs are going to become basically, you know, very important aspect of the, the ecosystem. So I, I think, I think, frankly, sooner or later, we're going to, we're going to see that, you know, uh, this, this is going to become basically big in, in the region. And, and, you know, if we are able basically to, to bring that content, you know, in country, I think, you know, we'll be able to tap into that opportunity with the right partners. It's a, it's an interesting conundrum. One about the technology itself too is how do you really bring it into the future or the present, um, but not also bring the the legacy. Um, you need to automate, you need to innovate as you do that as well. So it's a it's a great challenge for the industry. Uh, Camille, I might give you one last question. The audience has been really generous. Um, and this is more of a statement, but maybe I want to get your opinion on the statement. And that statement was that. And there's a thought that telecom technologies have reached the top of their evolution curve and the telecom business will start to drop dramatically after the implementation of 5G and open RAM. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, look, I mean, you know, I, I kind of disagree. I, I, I think basically, uh, look, I mean, what's happening with us today yeah, and at some point we're, we're like, you know, we're, we're asking the question, okay, what's happened now? What's next for the telco business, right? I mean, we have the OTTs basically taking a lot of our business, et cetera, et cetera. But frankly, I mean, now I think, you know, with our new strategy for sites, I mean, you know, the, the, you know, the ambition is clear and, and we don't think, well, I think well, there's a lot of room for growth because uh, we're going more towards focus on to the service, right? And that's where basically, you know, we're trying to split, you know, the infrastructure from, from the service. But then when you do that, you, you start focusing on the service and, and really basically try to focus on the customer, moving from being a product centric to customer centric and provide the best experience for your customers. So I think, I think this is very important. I will create value and will position us as well, you know, as, as, you know, closer to our customers. So that's one. But then you have a lot of other basically new cores where you can actually monetize better. Infrastructure is one of them. FinTech is one of them. The ICT, frankly, with, with the immense potential that it brings, you know, and even more for someone like Zane who have been focusing on mobile. So as such, you know, the B2C has been the main segment. So frankly, I mean, when, when you look now at all those cores that are actually, you know, all in, you know, on top of the telco as a service, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I would agree that basically we have reached basically the limit of the telco. At, at the contrary, I think, you know, there are a lot of opportunities that are open up to us. So it's a matter of how we can approach them. Uh, and, and, and bringing in the right talent, of course, and, and, and get the right partners to, to be able to take part of that growth potential uh, that is opening up to us uh, in our region. You uh, hit, hit it right on the head. And when you talked about the Zane Group uh, strategy, the foresight strategy, uh, it is all about digitization. It is all about innovation and involving broader than just mobile broadband consumer 
um, really adding value and innovation from technology, but also a business perspective into enterprises, e-health you talked about today, uh, you talked about e-sports and media. So there's a, a great opportunity to do together with enterprises. Um, it's been a real honour and a pleasure discussing the evolving telco and enabling the digital economy. Uh, Kamil Hilali, Group Chief Strategy Officer, Zain Kuwait, I want to thank you very much for your time. Great insights uh, and an amazing sharing of the journey around the Zain Group. Kamil, thank you very much. Thank you, Lucky. Much appreciated. And thank you for having me. Great stuff, thank Rod. You. Thank you very much, Camille, for uh, offering us your insights throughout that interview. And thank you, Lucky, for leading the discussion. And to both of you, thank you for your time here at Telecoms World. To our audience members, please make sure to join us at the next session where we, where we will be discussing the current state of the industry, 5G, cloud, and edge ecosystems. We will see you there. Bye-bye.